Hi Deviriens! In this video we will show you how to play Luna Capital, a game designed by José Ramón Palacios and with art by one of the best comic book artists in Spain and probably the world, Albert Montes. Uh, this is a game for one to four persons, so yeah, it has a solo mode, and it lasts around one hour, okay? Uh, Luna Capital takes us to an alternative 70s where the colonization of the moon is a reality and different companies fight to subsidize what will be the future lunar capital. Uh, you will have at your disposal the funds of one of those companies to start your settlement, improve it, competing against those of your rivals, Ignition. until it becomes a new Luna Capital. Five. So, well, let's take a closer look to what's included in the box. One, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes. So inside the box you will find the rules in different languages and a lot of components. You will find the elements and instructions to build the first player token, the card dispenser, the projectiles dispenser rocket, and also the tray for the projectiles. All those elements are to make the organization and setup easier. If we talk about the components of the game itself, you will find the main board with the regular game side and the side for the solo version with that apparently friendly robot. You have also four company tiles with their matching tokens. We have also the construction cards where we will build our settlement. Concession cards divided into, into short term and long term. Those cards will give you extra points at the end of the game if you have achieved some goals. You will find also the projectiles that will be used to improve your settlements. Those projectiles are divided in three, A, B and C corresponding to the phase where those tiles will be displayed, okay? Also, you have different kinds of uh, projectiles. You have vital systems with hydrogen collectors, oxygen collectors, water condensers, and greenhouses, where you can crop uh, apples, lemons, pears, or any of them. You have also sales offices, you have constructions, like up modes, uh, residential complexes or landing places. You have meteorites, you have uh, demolition tokens, and finally uh, selenite robots or logistic redistribution uh, tiles. Okay? Those two have also their tokens, like the selenite robots here and the log logistic uh, redistribution tokens right here. And finally you have a last delivery marker and a scoring pad. Now that we know what's inside the box, it's time to get everything ready to start playing, okay? So let's go for the setup. Um, first of all, you have to place uh, the main board at the center of the playing zone. For now, we're going to focus in the regular game mode. At the end of the video, we're going to explain you the difference with the solo mode. So for now, just the regular uh, game side of the board. And once you have the board, each player takes one, uh, one uh, company tile, sorry, and with their matching tokens, okay? Once we have that, it's time to take the concession cards, separate the long term from the short term, shuffle them separately, and take two of the short term and one of the long term, okay? The remaining ones go, uh, can go back to the box. Once we have the concession, it's time to go for the construction cards. Shuffle all of them, deal three, to each player and place randomly one of them in every empty space in the main board, so a total of four, okay? The remaining ones goes to the uh, cards dispenser. Once we have all the cards in the board and in the our hands, it's time to go for the projectiles, okay? As we said at the beginning, they are divided into three phases, A, B, and C. So for now, take the ones with the A, the other two are saved for later, and remove from the game those with a number of dots, you can see here, equal or higher to the number of players. Now we're simulating a game of four players, but for a two-player game, you have to remove those with two or more dots. For a three-player game, we will remove the ones with three dots, 
and as now known for a four players game, okay? So once we have the tiles, place randomly one of them below each card and the remaining ones goes to the rocket. Once we have that, we have to place the selenite robots and the logistic, redibu redistri logistic redistribution sorry, <laughs> in their places. And finally, we have to place the last delivery marker in the closest set of card and tiles to the uh, dispenser. To finish all the setup, just give the first player token to any player and starting from the last one, from the last player, so the one that is sit at the right of the first player, and going backwards, players can exchange one of their cards by one of the cards in the board. Once we have done that, it's time to start playing. So the games take place uh, through three phases, A, B, and C, and each phase is composed by uh, four rounds. And in each round, each player will play one turn. So uh, it will be one turn, four rounds, and three phases, a total of 12 turns, okay? Uh, during your turn, you have to take uh, a set of card and projectiles and just place the card in your hand and the projectiles in front of you. In, if you want to take the one with the, la the last delivery marker, you have to discard first uh, a card and place it at the bottom of the deck, okay? But that's not the case, so let's continue with that. Once you have uh, selected the, the set, it's time to place one of your cards in, the bo in, in your settlement, okay, following uh, those rules. First of all, uh, you cannot cover or any part of the card or rotate it, so the number will be always in the top left uh, corner, okay? Second rule, from the second card on, Cards must be in direct contact with the ones that are already placed, okay? And once cards have been placed, they cannot be rearranged or removed, okay? The third rule is that you can have a maximum of three rows, okay? And also, uh, there's no limit in the length of the row, okay? And different rows can have different lengths, so no problem. And the fourth rule is that uh, within the same row, Numbers must increase from left to right, okay? And no number can repeat in the same row. So if we had, I have an eight here, I can have an eight up here or in that row, but not in the same one, okay? If you have no cards that accomplish that rule of the numbers, uh, you have to place one of the cards face down, okay? And no, uh, obviously respecting the other three rules, and no projectiles can go uh, into that card because you have no empty spaces because that's the next thing that you're going to do in your turn all the projectiles that you uh, took from the from the beginning must be placed in the empty spaces of your settlement there are just uh, two exceptions that uh, of projectiles that can cover other uh, spaces okay for example uh, construction cards like that one can go on empty spaces or also can go onto lunar scaffoldings, okay? So there are two exceptions of uh, projectiles that can go over other uh, places. For example, uh, demolition cards can go over any projectile, we have that one here, and they turn that space into an empty space, okay? And also construction cards, those with the house, can go on empty spaces or into uh, covering, uh, covering sorry, the lunar scaffolding tiles, okay, that one. You will see also how some of the construction cards have a project already printed on it. They count as a regular project, okay? And you have also three projectiles that give you an immediate reward, okay? Those projectiles are the following, okay? You have the selenite robots, once you place it, you have to take the selenite robots and place them immediately into your tile, into your company tile. You have also the last, uh, the redistribution, logistic redistribution tokens. So if you place that one, you have to take one of those and place it in your company tile. 
And you have also the lunar landings, okay? They allow you to draw three cards, select one, keep it, and place the other two at the bottom of the deck. Selenite robots and logistic redistribution tokens will help you uh, during the game, okay? With Selenite robots, you can cover the number of a card that you want to place in the settlement. So that way, the number won't count for the fourth rule. And logistic redistribution tokens allow you to uh, swap the location of two projectiles, okay, before uh, taking a, a set of cards and tiles. So you can play that one, change those two because I prefer that card better with that one. Okay, that's the thing. So once you have placed all the tokens that you took in that turn, it's the end of your turn and you have to uh, replace all the empty space, uh, spaces, okay? So you will place a new construction card and as many projectiles as the round that you're playing. So if you are in the first round, just one. If, let's put in case, you are in the second round, then you will place one and two, etc., 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 okay? Finally, you have to move the last delivery marker to the, the cards and tiles that you have played, placed, and it's the next player turn that will do the same. Select one of the sets, take the card in its hand, uh, take the projectiles, place the construction card, the tiles, and you will move that way until the end of the round. When the round is finished, and before starting with a new uh, turn of the first player, you have to add one projectile to every set of cards and tiles. That way, you will have always as many projectiles as the round that you are playing, okay? So, a new round starts, and we continue that way until the end of the fourth round of that phase. Now it's time to remove all the projectiles, okay? take the ones of the new phase. So if now we are playing in the phase A, we will remove all those and we'll take the ones with the phase, uh, of the phase B, place one of them because we're going to play the first round of the phase B and the remaining ones to the rocket. And it's time also, before starting new turns, to check for uh, the concession cards, okay? If you have achieved the goal indicated in some of the cards, you can claim that reward, okay? Those rewards, those concession cards can be claimed for more than one player at the same time. Okay, so if me and that player have achieved that one, we can both claim that one. But you cannot claim a reward or a concession card that was claimed before. So if we are at the end of the phase B and let's imagine that one was claimed in phase A and now I have accomplished that one, I cannot claim it because it was claimed before. Okay, and that's it, we will continue that way until the end of the fourth round of the phase C that will put an end to the game, okay, after checking finally the, the last concessions and it will be the time to uh, calculate all the final score for all the players. So for the final score, it's just as easy as following what is printed in the in the scoring pad, okay? In the score pad. First, you have to check for vital systems, okay? And check which is the largest group of each one of them. So for example, if we check the oxygen uh, collectors, you have here a group of five. They have to be in direct contact or connected, not in diagonal, okay? You have a group of five here, here there's one, so that's the smallest group, the largest one will be that one with five. So just going to the table, a group of five scores 15 points. So just check that for every one of the vital systems, okay? Even with the greenhouses, they just have to be in direct contact. It doesn't matter the, the kind or the type that fruit of they grow, that they grow, okay? But that will be important in the next uh, scoring because greenhouses scores also for complete sets, okay? As we said at the beginning, uh, the, uh, you can grow apples, pears, and lemons in those greenhouses. So if you have the three of them, that's a com 
completed set. Okay, you have, uh, if you remember at the beginning, there are also some greenhouses that can grow any of the fruits. They count as a wild card, so you can use it as the fruit that you prefer. So, depending if you have one, two, or three completed sets, you will score five, twelve, or twenty-two points. Then you have to check for uh, meteorites, okay? Meteorites is a majority thing, so the player with more uh, meteorites will score 10 points for a two-player game. If, there's, if, it's a, if you're playing a three-player game, the first player, the player with more meteorites will score 10 points, and the second one will score two. And if it is a four-player game, the player with more meteorites will score 10 points, the second one will score five points, and the third one, two points. Also, if there's a tie, they will add uh, those scores and split it, rounding down, uh, between those two players. For example, if we are playing a three-player game and there's a tie in the first position of uh, more number of meteorites, you have 10 points and 2 points, that's a total of 12, they will split 6 points to each player. Okay? Then you will receive also 2 points for every sales office. Okay? You will score also for uh, the constructions, okay? Depending if they are if they are uh, up modes or residential complexes, they score differently. But that's showed in the in the same tile, okay? They explain you how to how to score uh, up modes. Uh, you score two points for every tile around that tile uh, that is uh, of the indicated type. And with uh, residential complexes, you will score one point for the indicated type that is in your settlement. They don't have to be around the residential complex, okay? Finally, you will score three points for every card that steals in your hand. And, obviously, the points that you have achieved with the concession cards. Adding all those points will give you your final score and the player with the, higher, the highest one will be the winner of the game. In case of tie, uh, the player with less lunar scaffolding will be the winner. If the tie continues, then uh, both settlements will uh, share the, the honor of being the named the lunar capital. Also, one thing that I forgot to tell you before, because it wasn't important, but uh, I can explain it now. You can see here how that's a, a largest uh, empty space. It's just one space, so it counts as a one space, okay? You cannot put uh, two projectiles here, obviously, but just for you to know. And that's it. At the end, if you have more points than your rivals, you will be the winner and your settlement will be named Luna Capital. In the solo mode, there's a Hats Mega Corporation that have seen all the profits that they can achieve of uh, having the capital of the moon. So they send an automaton to take uh, care of everything up there. So that's going to be your rival in that game. The setup is exactly the same as the one with a two-player game, but for the you have to put the the board in the, from the solo in the solo mode side, okay? And you just have to remove the, the card uh, of the concessions that says you, had, you need to have less uh, rows than your rivals, okay? And once you have the, your three cards and the three cards of the automaton, you have the opportunity to check the cards of the robot, of the automaton, and exchange your cards by them, by theirs, sorry. Uh, after that, just remove the three cards of the automaton, placing them uh, at the bottom of the deck. And the game works practically the same. Your turn is the same, just select one of the, of the sets. And, uh, let's say that one. You have to place the card following the rules and all that. But after your turn, uh, don't replace uh, the, that. Just leave it that way and it's the automaton turns that will select the card that is the farthest from the card dispenser and without the last delivery marker. So in that case, he will take that one. If the marker was here, he will take that one. And if the marker was here, he will take, it will take that one. Okay, just, just follow. And here, we'll continue that way, playing turns, passing rounds, and completing phases until the end of the game.
when you will check for the scores, okay? You will score as normal, with the tiny difference that the concession cards will work a little bit different, okay? Uh, for With the short-term concession cards, you will receive uh, the full value of the, uh, of the card if you have accomplished it after the phase A, okay? You will receive half of its value if you have completed after phase B and none of it if it was completed after phase C. With the long-term ones, you will receive its full value if it was completed after phases A or B and half its value if it was at the end of phase C. To show that, just uh, place the, your token at the top if you're receiving the full value or at the bottom if you're receiving half of it, okay? And then just uh, calculate the score as regular. The score for the automaton works a little bit different, okay? Because when it takes the cards, he, ha he has no settlement. He just plays the cards and tiles at one side, and at the end, you just have to check uh, those cards. That, by the way, uh, they are, uh, you are allowed to check all the times which cards and tiles though, that the automaton have, just to change your strategy, okay? But that way, it makes easier the, the, the final calculation, okay? So just take all the cards and tiles with the robot and just check uh, the final score. For the vital systems, the automaton scores as if all the tiles were adjacent, okay? You will check all the projects printed in the cards and all the, the tiles that he took and just uh, as many of every vital system we have, it comes as they are adjacent, so just check from the table, okay? Greenhouses, meteorites, and sales offices scores as normal, okay? With the constructions, the automaton will score five points for every con uh, construction. He will uh, score nine points for the cards in hand. It's like he doesn't discard any cards. And he fulfills all the concession cards, okay? So he has all the points from the those projects. And finally, he will score two points for every special uh, tile that it has. Those tiles were the ones with selenite robots, with landing, or with uh, logistics redistribution tokens. So once you have checked all of that, just compare the scores. And if you have more points than the automaton, you're the winner. If there's a tie, the automaton will be the winner. And that's it. That's Luna Capital. A strategic draft and build game with a really cool retro futuristic art that really puts you into the game. So we hope that you find that uh, video useful and see you in the next one. And remember to keep playing. Bye.